So here we are. <laughs> we are live. We did it. We did it. We got First players. Time. We got guys. We got some players on the team. All we wanted was guys. All we wanted. We got, all we wanted was guys. That's all we asked for. We got some dudes. I'm 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 wholly uh I still don't take back what I texted you. I, I still, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we can talk about it. <laughs> we can talk about it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Two-way guys. I'm so happy that yeah, Spike is I'm, on the two-way uh, guy podcast. We got, we got three to four hours of just the three <laughs> of us talking about these two-way players. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Had they just, just simply made these picks at like fifty one, yeah. If they made them made the picks, I'd yeah, be like, like I'm the happiest we, guy in the world. Yeah, I'd be thrilled. But the fact just that they had to yeah, wait could just been been done with it. Like this is the dumbest shit, man. They they are just not a smart team, not a smart organization. Like these these are all dudes. Like you could just like pop back in and grab Ricky Council. Like could have popped in, but we got him. We <laughs> got him. He's our guy. The Bulls, He's our Bulls guy. That's what like we tanked Bulls, for. The Bulls pop back in and got somebody. Yeah, but that guy's not good. <laughs> He's not so good. All right. You nah. guys ready to do? Ready Let's to go? Let's do it. All right. Yep. Oh, I have to start. Okay. No spike. The Right to Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> Sign up using code RTRS. The draft was tonight. The Sixers didn't have a pick. They didn't make a pick, but we got some guys. Spike's not here. We got Zoe. We're going to have a good time for a little bit. There's no commercials. This is a no commercial podcast. We're just talking about some guys before bed. CJ, play the music. Welcome to the Rice to Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Mike Levin, along with Alonzo Jones, here on draft night, where the Sixers didn't make a pick. We were miserable, and now we might <laughs> be a little bit bro. happier. Zo, how's it going? It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. You know, good to see you, brother. You know, yeah, we we barely made it. We squeaked through. I, I would say it wasn't even touch and go. It was just go for a little bit <laughs> until, until we saw that last Kyle Newbeck tweet. Yeah. So we got we speaking of Kyle Newbeck, we will we we should talk about that. You know what? They didn't make any picks, so we're not going to start with the guys that they picked. The Newbeck yeah. story, I think, is the story of the draft because it's a very <laughs> Sixers situation. And I'm breaking a little bit of news here because I was sent. I'm going to do this in a delicate way to not get anybody in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sent a screenshot of an Instagram story that had two whiteboards of the Sixers war room, kind of. <laughs> the carpeting is very interesting there. The whole de decor is really very bizarre, which is not the yeah, it's a weird room. first thing to talk about, but it is strange. Yeah. The whole viewing experience is odd. Uh, one of the whiteboards says potential seconds for cash, and it lists like, six or eight picks that the Sixers could have but didn't trade cash yeah. for. They didn't, again, didn't trade into the draft. And then another board further into the distance has a sort of cobbled together depth chart looking thing. Uh, 
so I got sent the screenshot. I sent it to our good friend Kyle Newbeck. Kyle Newbeck reaches out to the Sixers to be like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> and the Sixers are like, ah, shit, somebody did that. Ah. So somebody, so somebody worked for the Sixers, decided to get a little, a little post happy, never post rule. Never number post. one, shouldn't be never doing post. that. Yeah. And then here it is leaking on the situation, uh, on draft night where the Sixers didn't make any picks. The interesting thing about the board is it has a little bit of a depth chart Yeah, where it lists the starting lineup for the Sixers as Maxi Melton. Harden in red marker as a small forward, by the as way, as a small forward, classic small forward, James Harden, one of the best small forwards in NBA history, <laughs> Scotty Pippen esque, Scotty Pippen esque, sure. <laughs> uh, then at the power forward, Tobias Harris and center, Joel Embiid, PJ Tucker, backup power forward, yeah, B ball Paul, backup center in red backup ink, center. presumably yep. f- the red, the red indicates free agent. Yeah. Cork Maz backup shooting guard, Dan House backup small forward, Springer on the board happily, but behind Cork Maz in third yeah. string. Maxie's going to play 48 minutes. There is no backup <laughs> point guard. We don't need him. There's no backup point guard. Maxie's and it looks to me minutes. like the back, the third string center is, it says Petrushev, as in Philip uh, Petrushev. He's getting uh, his who, contract tomorrow, apparently. Who might be getting his contract very soon. There's been reports yeah. about that. Um, Somebody that writes for Eurohoops.net. Uh, yeah. Wanted to make sure I got the net right. Um, yeah. Said that Petrushev uh, can offer him a contract tomorrow. And uh, he was under the Sixers microscope all season. That is Aris Barkas uh, reporting that for Eurohoops.net. So that, and then the whiteboard confirms that report. And then the Sixers confirmed that report. So the strange thing about the, about the, uh, depth chart is that Harris is, or Harden is written there, right. Bebo Paul is written there, George Niang not on the depth chart whatsoever, and Jalen McDaniels not on the depth chart whatsoever, and Shake Milton, which is less less surprising. But um, interesting, it is stupid. People, I saw a lot of people on Twitter blaming Daryl for it. I don't necessarily yeah. think yeah. that that's. He is, should be confiscating phones of whoever is in the draft board room, but uh, it is very funny and funny that some guy sent it to me, and then I sent it to Kyle, and then the Sixers had to confirm it. That's journalism. To me, that's journalism. When the burner account guy, Sixers Enough, DM'd me uh, before the burner thing broke, and I ignored that message, I will no longer ignore messages that are... <laughs> Insidery Sixers information. So, Zoe, your your thoughts on on the depth chart and a very Orlando Magic type whiteboard thing happening to our Sixers? My immediate thoughts on the whiteboard just a very just dumb thing to happen to a dumb team. Mm-hmm. Like they they can't even hide the whiteboard correctly, <laughs> right? Like the like. You know, sometimes it's like blurred out, or like if you see it, it's like one name you see. You're like, oh, right. all right, like cool. Like they they have that guy on their list. <laughs> they had li- you can literally see every potential pick they wanted to buy, <laughs> and what the entire depth chart looks like. And I know it's like it's it's not even July yet, but the depth chart looks so bleak. A- 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 am I wrong for saying that? I'm, it's no, okay. it doesn't. It looks bleak. Yeah, <laughs> it looks absolutely bleak. Um, <laughs> Maxi is not going to have knee cartilage by the time December comes, dude. No, like, it's gone. They they don't have a backup point guard. They're going to be wheeling um, him into the playoffs. Right, right. <laughs> playoffs come round one. We'll be we'll be taking turns wheeling Maxi up the ramp into <laughs> into the locker room. Um, my that, that's my first thoughts on the whiteboard. My my thoughts in general on tonight, I, I, I that coincide with the lack um, of a pick with the lack of a pick is really just like I, like I told you offline, I just, they had to figure out what they do, right? Like to still attempt Robinson quote, like, figure out what you do. You had all like, summer figure to figure out what you do. You had all summer, dude. Like you had, you had all summer to figure out what you do, what you want to do. Um, I, I can't, We obviously we don't know everything, but like I would have been knocking down the wizard store for one of like Dylan Wright or somebody like, you gotta try something. 
that's that, I think that's I feel like that's the common theme from this podcast is like please try something. Like yeah. it's not even like like we won't fault you for trying. I, I for one I, I can't see for Spike, but like I personally won't I would never fault them for trying. But it just feels like they never put themselves in positions to try. And and so like gauge yourself to whom you would consider is the other two or three best teams in the conference, right? So the Celtics, the Bucks, the Heat. If whenever shit goes sideways for any of those three teams, they always figure out a way to either fix it or to take a swing at fixing it. But when it comes to what the Sixers do and when shit goes south for them, they never have a cohesive plan on how to fix it. Like there's never like, all right, here's our three-step process on how to make sure like Greg Monroe never plays a playoff minute. Like, <laughs> like and, and the list is just the list just goes on and on. And maybe it's a culture thing. I'm not gonna get into the heat culture, but it's only gonna be like a 20 minute podcast. But like I, I'm not gonna get into all that 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 silly shit. But I do feel like it's a it's a a, a, a ethos thing and a culture thing. Like they just never they're always reactive. There's never any moves made to say we're being proactive in how we approach anything this summer yeah i mean i i hope that the it felt the you know the the colangelo into the post colangelo situation felt very we're just doing a bunch of stuff especially elton yeah. elton was shooting elton was out there <laughs> shooting he was taking 35 <laughs> shots a night he's gonna be jordan Poole in the, right, with the wizards uh <laughs> and then dow came in and was just like let's just do some normal things some normal things and then yeah. Him and Doc very clearly had like a disconnect about like what each other wanted. Yeah. And then that's why it didn't seem like there was a fully cohesive plan, at least now maybe with Nick Nurse, because Dow got to hire him. Then there's a little bit more like a hand in hand guidance toward what we yeah. all think is the right is the right maneuvering. The depth chart thing to me is just very funny. And it is like June twenty second. Um, and so I'm happy to just like allow this to be very fun. And the yeah. Sixers con having to confirm, I don't know if Kyle called them or texted them, but having to having to confirm, be like, yeah, that's that's fine. That is uh, <laughs> what it is. It just gives me a lot of joy in a very funny way. Um, although the Sixers in Kyle's article do say like, someone viewing the image should not read too much into the depth yeah. chart, uh, yeah. which is funny. But there's some players that are on the depth chart that are free agents and some players that are not on the depth chart yeah, that really are free agents. But, chart, and yeah. that does indicate it. And JJ Redick fucking hour, like, you know, minute 20 of the, of the draft says someone's going to give George Niang a lot of money. Yeah. Like right he away. He said Houston. I think he, he said, said Houston. Houston should, he said Houston's going to give him a bag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I, mean, I thought was, that. which I thought was very funny. Like, he's, uh, like a, he's in a typical JJ fashion, just like being part shithead, but I'm obviously he knows, something that yeah is floating around there well coach jj he's the next coach yeah, of, well, he's coach the next coach JJ, of every right? of every team in the league i think he's in, um right. <laughs> so the they didn't buy a pick they depth the depth chart will hopefully change between now now and opening night um although we'll see how summer league goes uh all the guys that we went through on the last podcast to uh, in preparation for the draft where the sixers did not make the draft uh, Colby Jones is in Sacramento. Yep. Marcus Sasser is with Detroit. Our our Detroit Pistons that we love. Uh, what's going on over there? As long as James we Wiseman goes on there. a nice yeah. long sabbatical into uh, long. The, in, long. <laughs> into the Serbian desert somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go to Cutter and play soccer. Go, yeah, get out there. See see what your feet can do over there. See if Joel's <laughs> got some old clothes over there that you can put on. Uh, Jaime Jaquez with the Heat, obviously. Yeah. Tell, Taylor made Telegraph. Trace Jackson oh, Davis holds on until the like fifty seventh pick, and he's with the Warriors. Yeah. Um, that hurt. Julian Strother goes to the NBA champion Denver the, Nuggets. The, 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 ben the Shepard to Richard. the Pacers. Kobe Brown, our Kobe uh, Brown, our Kobe Brown. Y two Kobe, born on January first, two thousand. January first, six, wait, six eight, three hundred and seventy eight pounds <laughs> of Kobe Brown. Uh, he's with the Clippers. Uh, he'll probably start at small forward uh, in the playoffs right next away. year. Right away. When, yeah. when those guys are hurt. Seth Lundy, when Philly's own, Roman Catholic's own Seth Lundy with the Hawks. Amari yeah. Bailey. I'm happy, I'm happy for him. Yeah. Your son, Amari yeah. Bailey. Uh, My son, Amari Charlotte. Bailey. Yep. I'm happy for um, him too, but like, I hate that it's 
to Charlotte. Yeah. So we don't we don't get the guys. We don't get the guys we want. But as we are signing on to this podcast. And and I could feel I was like CJ didn't want to do this podcast. CJ CJ's tired. CJ's got it. CJ looks yeah, beautiful on camera. He's got to get his beauty sleep. And I was like CJ, we had this whiteboard story. Zoe's here. I'm Spike only lets me talk about the draft so much, so I'm gonna talk about it. We're gonna let's do it. Let's sign on. And then happily, <laughs> thankfully, manna from heaven, uh, some combination of all the news breaking guys in Newbeck <laughs> and whoever say that the Sixers have signed three two-way guys to the new th- there's now three two-way contract slots uh you could have 45 two-way contract slots with doc yeah. rivers he wasn't going to play any of them he wasn't. but now <laughs> there are three two-way spots the sixers have signed ricky council the fourth who's a wing from arkansas turquavion smith who's a guard guardy combo guardy from yeah. nc state and arizona's big man azulis tabellas um, who played a lot of a lot of time for the for the Wildcats over there? I yeah. am intrigued by these names. Ricky Council is yeah. someone that I didn't think would last that long. I was expecting him to go in like the thirty fives. Jake Pavorsky is texting me about how much he likes Ricky Council. He's one. He's a Ricky Council guy. Turk Smith has a lot of juice, and Tabellus is like pivoty and uh, Sabonisy. In some ways, what do you like about those guys? Does this t- does this win you back over to uh, your Philadelphia seventy whiteboards? <laughs> uh, you know, it. it um, I will give them a mini thumbs up for the, for getting more guys in because you got to continue to like churn and burn is the name of the game, right? Like you yes, got to continue to get guys in. You got to got to get guys in. You got to see what they look like. Um, you know, see what summer league looks like. I'm, I Ricky Council the fourth spent those two years at Wichita and then immediately as he got to Arkansas became their number one scorer. I think he yep. he's a guy who can score at the next level, slasher, he's strong. Um I honestly I think people may have been scared off by the fact that he just had a terrible shooting year. He shot like I think 27% from three, but I don't think that's his I don't think that's really him. Mm-hmm. I think that he was, you know, he took a lot of those shots because he was their best player. Um, or like forced to be there, you know, one of their best players. So I'm interested to see him in an offense where he can just rely on that that sneaky athleticism. Um, you know, same thing with like with Turk. I, I think Turk is. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm probably out of the three of them. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued by Turk. I think Turk is. I think he can be really, really good. He's another guy. If you just let him rely on his athleticism and um, you know a little bit of you know refining that passing. I think that he could be really good in the program. Um, and Azula Sabellis, I, you're on the West Coast, so you you saw more of them than I did. But, like, mm-hmm. when I got the opportunity to watch them when they were on ESPN and CBS, um, I was impressed. I thought that – I think that he's a guy who um, – I think he – he they had him listed at 6'11", but he measured at 6'8", at the combine, which is, like, you know, a, a lot of those guys measure shorter than they are, really are. But – he definitely plays bigger than that. Um, can get up and down the floor with the ball if you need him to. I, I I think that he's he's a really intriguing prospect. I would definitely keep him around um, if he shows that he has a pulse. I think he's I think he's a guy who <laughs> should be. You know, he's another guy who should be in your program. Like, I could see the three of these guys being the next phase of of Delaware. To be honest, like I think the three of them could stay in the system, and they should. Like I think. The natural progression would be Jalen Springer gets the call up. He's on, you know, he's on the big dog roster all year. And like two or all three of these guys to kind of fill in that gap down there. Yeah, I I I'm intrigued by all three of these guys. Um I love the idea. I think the Sixers now haven't made a draft pick in two straight drafts. Two straight drafts, yeah. And part of that is because they trade stuff away and they've had to yeah. like death by a thousand cuts after we had such a surplus of picks in the past and now there's just like you know somebody some star becomes available and it's like Sixers should make an offer and it's like what yeah. are we trading what are we cork <laughs> yeah, right. and well we got a bunch of whiteboards we got a, a ton of whiteboards we could send out so maybe there's something or, there 
as we all say on Twitter, a gently used Tobias. Yeah, right. very gently, lightly washed Tobias. Um, <laughs> very well scrubbed, uh, <laughs> young Tobias bo- books with him. So they just haven't been able to like replenish. And yeah. I obviously get um, very upset at the idea of just packaging Springer into any trade yeah. because it's like, or I mean, obviously Maxi. And you go like, man, there's just nothing. There's not contracts to package. There's not young guys yeah. to entice teams with. And it just seems yeah. like so many other good teams like restock the cupboard more often. And so yeah. what I'd love to happen, like the Sixers two-way guys last year uh, never really contributed. Charlie Brown Jr. Yeah. a little bit. Uh, Mac McClung, who d- does suck at NBA <laughs> basketball, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, uh, it looks like Mac McClung will be gone. It looks like Lewis King will be gone. Yeah. Um, now that there's three two-way spots, I would love for at least one of these guys to the following year take the 13th roster spot and start growing yeah. into stuff. Like there, there can be a pipeline of because there's really not much of a difference between like the the 45th pick in the draft and a couple two-way guys. It seems like the yeah. Sixers uh, undrafted two-way guys. The Sixers seemingly right after the draft ended. These three deals were announced yeah, within like not, five yeah. minutes. Yeah. So they yeah. had them locked in, which is nice that people are working. It's good that the Sixers are yeah. expensing yeah. travel to New York so they can get these things. They're not just hanging out and ordering, <laughs> right. ordering Chinese food. Right. So I, they're, they're, make, they're making it happen. I would love for one of these guys to stick. And I think that yeah. these are all three of them are interesting players. They have Ricky Council especially has like – Ricky Council is, has a big NBA body, like 6'5 because, with like a 6'9 yeah. wingspan. Um, he's 21. Uh, he can score. He can. He is an absolute like really NBA athleticism, um, yeah. and scoring. Um, the Turk Smith is like really explosive from the guard spot and is really narrow, but bouncy and fun to watch. Um, I'm intrigued by it. I'm happy that this happened. I am, will not forgive them for not making a selection in the yeah, draft for two yeah. straight years, which, as Kyle Newbeck right. said, this is the first time ever that they did not even make a selection that they traded. They just never made a selection in this draft, um, which is crazy. But we'll talk, we'll talk more about those guys as we can dig into it more. But uh, nice to have a couple interesting pieces uh, sort of tucked away. And if, if they can, yeah, if... If they can shoot in the G League level, if they can come in when people get hurt or whatever, and all of a sudden like make some plays happen, I, I just feel like the Sixers, the other guy, other teams get guys that are undrafted and go, oh, now they're part of the culture and part of the system, and we're playing them. Yeah. They're in the rotation, and yeah, maybe they're bet they're uh, a two way spot compared to some guy that's on an NBA contract, but this person's better, and we're going to play them. And it just seems like the right. Sixers never have that. And then they never grow into it and they never replenish the cupboard and feel like it's a full um, meritocracy of whoever is playing the best basketball will win and get contracts. And they'll, like you said, churn through some stuff. So just, I'm hoping like, that this, I'm hoping this happens. I'm, I'm, I also just hope that there's some more balance to whatever the final roster looks like. They just, if you, if you take, to take Maxi out, and Springer, like they really aren't that explosive or like just that quick or athletic, and mm-hmm. it it really really does kill them. And not that these three guys are going to fix it, but like you need you need more bodies in here who are quick, who are fast, who can get up and down the court. Like if you are trending toward a world where who the hell knows what's going to happen next year. But like, if, if you had to turn the keys over to Maxi in two seasons from now, he's going to, like, he's going to need guys who can run up the floor with him. Like you don't, ha- you don't have that right now. And you don't have the draft capital at the moment to, con- to start building toward that. So you got to figure out some way to get that kind of talent in here, because how you play now is just not going to be how you play two years from now. Um, at least the odds are that that's not going the way this team is going to look at all, you know, in 2025 or 2026. Yeah. Well, Tobias wasn't traded tonight. A lot of guys weren't traded before yeah, the, before the draft. We had the Chris Paul Jordan Poole yep. situation, which yep. is very interesting and does knock one of my p- potential Tobias trades off the table. Yeah. yeah. And then 
Uh, Porzingis does go to Boston, which we talked about in the last spot, but Marcus Smart finally leaves the Celtics. What a great day it is to not have him around there anymore. Man. We'll talk about that, about that more over the course of time. <laughs> the B stopper is gone, right? Yeah, he's gone. I mean, it's just like it is nice to see them have a little bit more. I think there's a chance that they all of a sudden just trade for Dame and I fucking <sighs> jump into a lake, but it's nice to see them having some losing some of their like guys that just win and guys that just figure it out and find yep. a way yep. and have a little bit more loser energy coming coming Boston's way to yeah. uh, enforce how Mike O'Connor feels about them. It's nice to it's nice that he's not there, and I do love Marcus Smart in Memphis. I think that's going to be very fun. They're going to be a real good team. That's going to be tough, man. He's going to. I, I feel like two things I thought about during that trade. One was, you know, I think I tweeted hit the green light he's going to have for those first twenty five games is going to be unlike any green light we've ever seen in the history of the game. Um, mm-hmm. And the second was, um, I think it might have been. It might have been right before the final started, but you but it was on a pod and, and you said something like it's it's, you, it's still weird how things are going to shake out because, you know, Milwaukee could lose both Middleton and Lopez. And then more importantly, like what it, like what happens if, if the Celtics shake things up and like I, the way that Celtics fans are reacting to Marcus Smart leaving like smart Celtics fans, too, is. Kind of, it kind of hints toward what you mentioned. Like he, he was more than just, he was more than just their heart, but he was also, you know, probably their best defensive player, and just a guy who, if they needed a pull, like a weird pull up three or just like a tough yeah. momentum changing game or, yeah. you know, or momentum changing play, it was a changing guy grift guy to like literally uh, grift, flop right, into a right. foul, an offensive foul, right. that kind of thing. Like a guy who needed, like if you needed to draw another offensive foul on Maxi, he was the guy to get it right. And like, yeah. I think they're going to miss that. They they really are going to miss that. They don't have anybody like that on the roster. You know, like you said, trending they're trending more toward the equilibrium of loser energy. So I, I mean, I'm interested, man. I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they look like. Yeah, I mean, if the Sixers aren't going to be good, then everybody else in the East can also start to yeah. suck. Like, Let's start to level out a little bit. Yeah, it would be nice for the uh, the East collectively is probably going to take a step back. I mean, good. The West looks like it's which is great. That's what we want because great. Everybody take a everybody take a collective step back, and then we'll just wait to send the sacrificial lamb to get slaughtered by uh the, by the Nuggets again next year. I'm a Pistons fan now. I'm a Orlando Magic yeah, fan, Pistons, obviously. Pistons, right. I was our I was Pistons texting you and Magic. some other people about bringing Tyrese Mack or. Uh, Mar- Marco Volt Mark back Allen, in a yeah. trade, in a Tobias situation. Gary Harris, the the Gary Harris that was promised, finally coming home to Philadelphia. That's a potential. There's a lot of yeah. lot of Matt, options. Shout out to Matt Carey for that. Matt Carey yeah. deserves Gary Harris. Long time. Right. Eventually, he's it, every. It all. We're never wrong. We just take some time to be right. Sometimes <laughs> take some time to be right. That's right. Uh, but we got a couple guys. They didn't make any picks. We got a, a whiteboard leaked. Uh, what the thing about that whiteboard thing, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it more. But before we go, like, it's not like it was a picture of like, here's a picture of me at the draft, right? Here's right. a picture of like the like Sixers seal that says like NBA draft, and it looks like all yeah. crisp and stuff. It is just it is just some weird carpet, some weird wall and drawer and situation, like, and some weird wallpaper. Yeah, and, like and a, I think it was like maybe like a concrete wall too. Yeah, like, <laughs> and it's just like here and here are the whiteboards that say the information <laughs> on them. It's not like the whiteboard is in the background of something. No, it's not like no. there is incidentally whiteboards are part of this picture. Part the, of the picture is all whiteboard. It is here you go. And so look, if that guy it gets in trouble for this, <laughs> he has to blame himself. This is not I an accident. Himself, dude. He has simply post. has to blame himself for this and uh yeah. look That's they didn't even buy a pick posting. so you never post right they didn't even buy a pick anyway so it does, it's fine don't worry about yeah. it you can't post this fall for posting anyway never post anyway sixers did not make a pick uh we did have a fun night watching the draft we'll yeah. we'll talk we'll maybe in the future about the fact that houston drafted Amen thompson which yeah. they probably wouldn't do if they were planning on giving the ball to james harden yeah, 98% like of the that, time. Yeah. 
I thought you guys were going to talk about that Saturday, yeah. So I don't know. It's a, it is a – there are a lot of things that can happen, and it feels mm-hmm. like there's almost nothing that can happen. Your yeah. 2023 Philadelphia 76ers. And there it uh, is. We'll see if Nick Nurse turns it around. Zoe, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for staying course, up man. late. Thank you for right. doing a podcast about the draft where they did not make a pick. Uh, <laughs> Always. Let's do it again Always. next year. Let's do it again next year, baby. Every year, right. baby. We got it. <laughs> uh, are you down with two TTP, Zoe? Yeah, you know. Look face. There it is.